how do boudoir shoots really work? So whether you're a photographer or you are looking to be photographed, you might be really unsure about how boudoir shoots work. And it can feel really overwhelming to guess what is supposed to happen at one of these shoots. Well, I'm gonna break down the five parts to a photo shoot and take away some of this mystery. And the fifth point is what turns all of this up to 11, so do not check out early. It's showtime. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California, and I love creating a phenomenal customer experience. Part of it, I want to have a good time. I didn't create this business because I want to sit behind a desk and do boring, mundane work. That's not my jam. But also, I know the transformative power of these photo shoots, and I want to give my clients the best possible experience. So when I got into this, I really didn't know what happens in a boudoir shoot, but I figured these things work well with other types of clients, families, high school seniors, some of my corporate work. Obviously, we do things a little bit differently in a boudoir sesh, but I took the same fundamental and years of learning from other brilliant business people about how they create their own customer service experience from the chocolate chip cookies at the Double Tree Hotel to the Popsicle Hotline at Magic Castle. There are so many different things that companies do to really create an incredible experience. That's how I run my shoots. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of the five stages to my shoots so you can prepare for them properly and have an incredible experience, whether you work with me or another photographer. Number one is preparation. Number two, hair and makeup. Three, wardrobe styling. Number four, posing. And five, the little things. All right, so let's talk about preparation because if you don't do this, whether you're a photographer or a client, I can pretty much guarantee you're not gonna have a good time. Preparation is key for literally everything in life, especially for a shoot. And a couple of the things that come to mind, Getting plenty of sleep the night before, whether you're a photographer or you are being photographed. If you're not rested, if you're dragging ass, you are not gonna perform well on either side of the camera. Same thing with being hydrated. Hydration gives you energy, it leaves you feeling fresh, and if you're being photographed, your skin looks better, you don't have lines left behind from your clothes, little things like that. You'll hold makeup better, also your hair will style better. All these things are important. So getting plenty of sleep, hydration, eating. Eating is huge especially if you are being photographed. So many clients choose to not eat in the morning because they think they're gonna be fat in their photos. Obviously, don't have an entire pizza if that's gonna leave you feeling bloated, but eat food because hangry does not photograph well on anybody. I have this on two different pages in my preparation guide. Literally, it says this one thing on one page, and then on the next page, it says here, I'm gonna say it again because it's that important, and it's getting sleep, tons of water, and eat something. Also, when you're packing clothes, roll things up, put things on hangers, do not just stuff things into a suitcase because wrinkles in clothes don't photograph very well. I keep a steamer here in my studio and I believe any legit photographer will have one so that they can steam wrinkles out of your clothes, but we don't really want to be here steaming everything. I don't really offer that service. It's more of a last resort. If somebody shows up with something and there's a couple wrinkles in it and we're gonna use that garment, I will go ahead and steam it. I've ironed clothes during shoots before when we've done on location or hotel stuff. But again, if you can have things wrinkle-free before the shoot, that is ideal. And photographers, be prepared to handle that should the need arise. Also, having all your equipment as photographers, extra batteries, memory cards, your lenses and everything, make sure everyone's on time everyone knows the address. All of those things in the preparation phase will just make everything run smoother on game day. All right, number two, hair and makeup. Yep, number two is hair and makeup. I always have a stylist here for my shoots. I do not do a boudoir sesh without my stylist to do hair, makeup, and lashes. Couple reasons. One, most people don't know what photo makeup is. It's different than regular going out for dinner makeup. It's not quite stage makeup if you're ever on a dance team or cheer or you performed in a band or something. Stage makeup is super heavy. Photo makeup is kind of in between, and then going out makeup is definitely on the lighter side. And whether you wanna go full glam or you want a more natural look, which is 
usually more makeup than a full glam look, surprisingly enough. Having a professional who knows how to do photo makeup will save a ton of time in editing, but also allow your client, no matter what skin type or skin tone or hair they have, to look and feel their best. Super important. Because if someone does a bad job on their hair and makeup, and then they come in here and they're not feeling good about themselves, they're not going to feel great in the photos, and that will translate to the end result. So I'd rather have a pro here. Plus, it's an hour and a half of just warm up chat time. I don't have a camera in my hand. We pour them a glass of wine or some bubbly water. Uh, if it's a morning sesh, I'm usually still drinking my coffee. And we hang out for an hour and a half and just chat while you get your hair and makeup done. And that warm up time really sets the stage for a smooth shoot. So when we actually get to photo time, you didn't just walk in the door and be like, hi, nice to meet you and take all your clothes off, you get the opportunity to hang out and feel less nervous about the experience. So that's why I love hair and makeup and having a real professional do it. Plus, my stylist stays for the whole shoot. So whether we're touching up lip color, adjusting stray hairs, twisting straps, whatever needs to happen, I am never touching my client. As a male photographer, never. I will never touch my clients. And even my female stylist, only does so with permission. We always ask our clients first, is it cool if I do this? And then she will go in and adjust things. So invaluable to have somebody else there to help out and also a second set of eyes. I am focused on the poses. I'm focused on the expression, making sure my clients are feeling good about themselves. I might miss something like a twisted waistband strap. Usually I can spot all of these details, but once in a while something slips, but my stylist always catches it. We've worked together for nine years. We are a well-oiled machine and I don't do shoots without them. Number three, wardrobe. A lot of times, clients have no idea what they are gonna wear at a photo shoot, and that's cool. That's not your job. That is my job as a photographer, or whoever your photographer is, to educate you on what you should be wearing. I believe 1,000% boudoir is a mindset, not a dress code. We can take the same seductive photos if you're in a, a raincoat wearing a traffic cone for a hat as we can in lingerie. So we can do anything Anything with anything. That's the magic of this. Uh, traditionally, boudoir photographers shoot everyone in lingerie, and that's cool. Fuzzy sweater, pajamas, jeans, cocktail dress, whatever you want to wear, groovy, bring it. We photograph people in wetsuits and military uniforms, in scrubs, in mermaid tails, hiking clothes. One of my clients recently does Krav Maga, and so she had one of her martial arts outfits with, you know, wrist wraps and everything, we've done boxing gloves, you lab equipment, doctor's coats, you name it, we've done it. And that's one of the things I love about this is getting creative. Now, I don't take sexy photos. That's not what I do. I take photos of people being strong, confident, feminine, elegant, that translates to sexy, but there's nothing sexualized in my photography. Other photographers have a different approach. They might have more explicitly provocative images, and that's totally cool. That's their style, it's not mine. So I can incorporate other outfits into the shoots that aren't traditionally sexy because I don't take sexy photos. So work with your photographer on the kind of things that work well with them and the kind of things that don't. And as I mentioned before, keep it all wrinkle free and always bring more outfits than you think you're gonna need. If your photographer tells you you're gonna do three looks, bring six or seven outfits. If you're gonna do five, bring 10. Because the things you pack three days ahead of time, you may not be feeling at the actual photo shoot. And the last thing you wanna do is be forced to wear something you're really not into because you didn't bring anything else. So bring more than you think you're gonna need and then you can get excited about new things when you're actually there at the shoot. Number four, posing. This is my favorite. I love posing my clients. I mean, for me, it's like doing stop animation. I'm like, no, elbow over this way, this elbow down, shoulder forward, relax that one, chin over, eyes down, inhale, bring that knee across, point your toes down. I am telling my client how to move every single part of their body for every single pose. Certain photographers don't operate that way. But even for the more candid images where my clients are just interacting with something. It looks like we just happen to be capturing a moment. Every one of those is engineered. So I do this in family photos as well. I get everyone in a base pose, and then I can encourage people to interact in certain ways that create very natural looking images. And then I can put people back into a more structured pose and then loosen things up. And we go back and forth like that. That is how I run my shoots. Every photographer is different. But if you have no idea how to pose yourself in front of a camera, 
It's not your job. Your photographer is 1000% responsible for that. So when you are choosing a photographer, also ask, do you guide me through poses step by step? Will you tell me where to put everything? Or do I need to know how to do that ahead of time? And if they say, oh no, you come in and just be yourself, be natural, it'll work out, then find another photographer because it's not your job to know how to pose and you need to know what to do in front of a camera if you want the pictures to turn out. So find a photographer who can actually pose you. And usually you can tell when you look at their website if their photos are well posed. Also, if every image on a website looks like they're a professional swimwear model, maybe the photographer isn't actually posing any of them and they just photograph people who already know how to pose. So again, always ask your photographer, do you guide me step-by-step step through all the poses or do I need to know how to do these things ahead of time? And then that's up to you to decide whether or not you want to practice in front of a mirror to try and get these poses down or if you'd rather just go to somebody who will hold your hand and guide you through it. Because I really enjoy the posing process for me, working with different ability levels. If somebody has bad knees and I can't do kneeling poses or certain standing poses, cool. I love that challenge. I'm going to do a shoot totally different with that person than I would with somebody else. Also somebody a size zero versus a size 16. I can't do the same poses or if their legs are long and a short torso or vice versa, everyone moves through poses differently. And I love that part of what I do. So find a photographer who also enjoys that process and you're going to have a way better time. And lastly, number five, as I mentioned, the thing that brings it all together, the thing that turns it up to 11, the little things. When my clients walk in from the outside. This sign is at the door. It welcomes them. It's got their name handwritten on it, and it's got a cool phrase that I came up with. So many of my clients take a picture with this and post it on their Instagram of how excited they are before and after the shoot. Free marketing, but also it helps them feel welcome when they arrive. They know they're in the right place, and they're already being greeted with a positive message. Also, when they come in, I check on temperature. How are they feeling? If they get too warm, too cold, let me know, and I will adjust. I can't tell you how many shoots I've been like overheating, super sweaty, all these shirts I wear are mesh and breathable because I run warm. But if my client's not comfortable, they're going to be sweaty or have goosebumps or be stiff or look uncomfortable in the photos. I don't want that. I will be as cold or as hot as I need to be as long as my client's comfy. But I check on them throughout the experience. Just like when we pour them a glass of Prosecco or bubbly water or room temp still water, I have options because I want them to feel seen, feel taken care of. We help them pick out their clothes. My stylist stays with them the whole time. I even even started taking behind the scenes photos of my stylist adjusting their straps and their hair when I have them in poses and including those in my reveals. And now my clients are choosing the photos of them being adjusted by my stylist to go in their albums because somebody followed them around for three hours to make sure they felt pretty. They love that memory and they want to make that a part of their book. And I think that is so cool that my team like made a big enough impact. You know, I've never been on one of my clients albums. Obviously I'm taking the photos, but my team is. And I think that is super cool. It's the little things. Also the follow-up email the next day. I email all of my clients and tell them they did a great job. And then I'm so stoked for them to come back and see the photos and all the details and how I present my images from the velvety coating on the pages in my albums to the metallic red gilding on the outside of the books. All of my wall art is done on metal and it looks effing gorgeous. All of these little details make the experience as opposed to somebody coming in. It's a natural light look out in a park. You don't give any real direction. You give every image over on a Google Drive and they're like, cool, it was very transactional. It might have been an enjoyable experience, but it's nothing anyone's gonna rave about. All of the details here are thought through, but I personally love this part of it and it doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, and I don't do it for the attention, but when my clients leave reviews and tell people about them, they're like, I heard you give your digital images on an actual crystal USB drive. I'm like, it's true. I'm very extra like that. And they're like, well, why can't I just get, you know, like a regular photo album? I'm like, because look at this and I'll show one of the albums that I do. And they're like, holy crap, this is amazing. Now I see why you would never want to do anything else. All the little details matter. And, you know, from the prep guide to the follow-up phone calls and emails, every check-in, every bit of detail you pay attention to makes a difference. So do not overlook those things. So there you go. What happens at a boudoir session? These five things, whether you're a photographer or being photographed will make or break your day. The preparation, the wardrobe, hair and makeup, 
posing, and the little things. I know that wasn't an order, but great. So if you want to know more about how to run a profitable photography business, I have a ton of other videos here on this channel. I like what is boudoir all about? Or what is the purpose of boudoir? I've got another one with my five favorite ways to attract new clients in 2022. And if you're looking to find a photographer, I have a great video on how to find a photographer for you. So you can find more about my own studio at mikeloydstudios.com. Or if you want to learn more about becoming a photographer, head to boudoirguild.com and I will walk you through everything step by step. You are amazing. I'll see you inside.